Live from the KHOU 11 studios, it's Great Day Houston. And now, here's your host, Deborah Duncan. Great day, Houston. All right, relationships. If it's how society is supposed to work, then why can't it be, why is it so difficult, rather? Here's the answer, because we're human. Our individual collection of experiences determines what we do, how we view things, and therefore, how we act in a relationship. And not just romantic relationships, it also affects everything from how you deal with coworkers to what goals you actually accomplish, and even how you deal with that stranger who cuts you off on the highway. For example, the silver Honda Accord this morning, I think it was a 2012. License plate Z5. <laughs> all right, our therapists sitting up here right now are saying, let it go, let it go. Well, it all goes back to how we're handled as children. How we handle things, it goes back to how we were handled as children. So to help us get around, over, or through some emotional baggage, let's ask the therapist. Please welcome our panel of licensed therapists, Emily Diallo, Mickey Grimlin, and Mark Trahan. Good morning. And if you have a relationship question, give us a call at 713-284-1055, 713-284-1055, and we'll try to get to it during the next hour. And because some of our conversation will be adult in nature, if you have young children in the room, let this serve as your warning. All right, round of applause for our therapist this morning. Okay. So going into therapy, you can basically deal with any issue someone has before you, but um, a lot of you have specialized in specific things. So Emily, for you, uh, sex. That's right. That's what I chose to specialize in. Not that you have to. People kind of do a mix of all different things. But um, for me, I just think that sex and relationships drive so much of our behavior, and it's such an integral part of our psyche, and it was just very interesting to yeah. me. So. But, you know, a lot of people, when you mm -hmm. say integral part of our psyche, people say, oh, sex, are you talking about how to do things better? or what's the And it's not it's exactly that. Than, sex mm -hmm. is much bigger than a lot of us It's think. a lot deeper than that. I mean, when people come in with a sexual issue, I, I do a pretty thorough history and assessment because so many different things can impact our sexuality from, you know, body image, unresolved trauma, family of origin, relationship problems, anxiety and the list goes on and on. Yeah, so, that's probably the most vulnerable you will be with somebody. Exactly, exactly. And so you really have to take a deeper look and see what may be going on underneath that's contributing to the problem. Yeah. Mickey? So. so I'm a family therapist and do a little bit of everything too, as do most therapists, but I specialize in family, adolescence, and midlife issues. And I loved what you said about sex, which is so true. It's so much more intimate than just the act of what you're going to do with your bodies. Yeah. You were talking earlier, too, about it all starts in childhood. There's a great saying that will kind of undergird this show, which is whatever is hysterical is historical. So if you went crazy on the freeway this morning. <laughs> no, and, I didn't. Know, no, they went crazy. <laughs> okay, I restrained them. myself from going crazy well, back. Well, then they probably had a trauma background, but not you. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> they, they need to anger. hopefully go watch this anger. show. Yes. Right. <laughs> Pull over. I have some cards to give you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mark. Well, I'm a relationship counselor, so I, s I meet primarily with people in relationships, 20s, 30s, and 40s, that are dealing with problems that ra r range from conflict to trust to problems with infidelity, which mm -hmm. we're going to talk about a little bit today. Yeah. So uh, a range of issues, but mostly couples. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's interesting because it all ties together. Usually if one person in the family mm -hmm. needs therapy, pretty much everybody <laughs> needs to go in on that therapy as well. Yeah. All right. Um, Speaking of families, I was talking about this show yesterday, and someone comes up and says, oh, there's a line. They're like, please ask them this for me. Make an appointment. No, but they're like, please <laughs> ask this for me. Uh, and this happens a lot. You see this a lot in Houston because we're such a diverse community. And so one of my friends is Indian. She's first generation American. And her parents are livid that she is going to marry a man who's just a plain white American Baptist boy. And so they don't share the same religion. They don't same, share the same cultural background. And she's torn, obviously, right. between her parents, whom she loves, but at the same time, aren't honoring who she loves. Mm -hmm. How do people walk through that? It's a really tricky one. I mean, I think at the end of the day, you have to do what's going to make you happy. Because I work with a lot of, you know, couples from different backgrounds who did give in to the pressures of the parents, mm -hmm. and it causes problems later on. And so I think you can be a healthier member of the family if you're getting your own needs met first. Yeah. But it's mm -hmm. really important, too, that you have to respect. These are, these are long, mm -hmm. long instilled values inside the family. So that woman is probably going to have some 
serious conflict because she's been raised in a culture that says this is the way you do it. Yeah, and it's a good point. It's not just that they don't like right. this guy. Yeah. Right. It really has probably very little to do with the guy. Right. Because he is a nice guy. But right. so uh, there's got to there's got to be respect. There's got to be right. respect mm -hmm. from each member of the family mm -hmm. to make room for the feelings. Doesn't mean you have mm -hmm. to do the behaviors, but you've got right. to make room for the feelings. Yeah, and Mark, mm -hmm. the problem there too is that uh, you know the fiance is he can't say choose between me or the parents, no. you know, because it's hard. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of on the sidelines. Right. But he has a lot to say. Right, right. Now every relationship is a blending mm -hmm. of two cultures. Okay, so no matter what relationship you're in, there's two cultures that are coming together. However, in a situation where there are lots of values and important pieces of information that you're trying to blend about especially relationship with in-laws, it makes it even more difficult sometimes to get through those conflicts without becoming critical of one another and critical of the process that you're going through. So I would suggest that it, since all couples have problems, just be careful about the way that you talk to each other about the relationship with right. the in-laws. Right, right. The in-laws are legendary, aren't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. and, and they're not going anywhere. you got to figure out a way to get along. Yeah. Yeah. And I always thought, I'm not going to be one of those. My son is 10, but I'm looking at my son going, one day I'm going to hand you over to another woman. <laughs> All right, let's go through uh, some email questions that we have. Uh, this first one is one that I think a lot of couples battle. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband wants to have sex all the time. I don't. He seems to think since we're only 28 years old, it's a reflection of how much I love him. How do I get him to see that my love for him has nothing to do with how much we have sex? Leslie. So this is a very common issue. I see. I like to call it a discrepancy in desire because what happens a lot of time is the person with the lower desire in the relationship kind of identifies themselves or is identified by their partner as the one with the problem. Mm -hmm. And I just don't see it that way. I think, you know, in most couples, there's going to be a little bit of a higher desire and a lower desire partner. You just don't want the gap to be too wide. And so you want to take a look, especially if they're a little bit of a younger couple, if sex has really declined pretty quickly, you know, since they got together, I would take a look at why that was. Because there's a there's you know a little bit of a natural decline that happens over right. time for most couples, but if it's it's kind of a sharp fall, then I would wonder what else may be going on in the relationship to contribute to that. Yeah, as we were talking about a little bit earlier, sometimes we have a hard time talking to each other. Right. And so you do things like withhold. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of times like, I'm really it's mad about at control. you, so uh -huh. I'm just going to control. Exactly. Yeah, I mean the lower desire partner is always the one in control. Yeah. And it happens very subconsciously, <laughs> you know, it does. And so I look at, you know, if there's an unequal distribution of power in the relationship, again, just one of the many underlying issues that can contribute. Yeah. But you know, you have to always look at, you know, the relationship between sex and love and the meanings that we attach to that because they're different for everybody. Yeah. And you know, the other thing I'm looking at too is that comparative thing that we do. You mm -hmm. must not mm -hmm. love me. It's almost like when we overspend mm -hmm. at Christmas time for our kids or or spend mm -hmm. at their birthdays right. and go, look how much I love them. I brought in a pink pony for their right. birthday and I did this mm -hmm. and I did that. And you know, because mm -hmm. you know, these, these kids' birthday yeah. parties are getting so crazy right now. Yeah, My poor son, I was like, how about we just have some barbecue at the house? <laughs> 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 like, but the, where is Superman? Yeah. Where is, you know, the whole bit? Mm -hmm. But you know, Deborah, there's a gender difference too because mm -hmm. for men, sex equals love, it doesn't mm -hmm. for women. Yeah. For women, emotional connection equals love. So right. there's difference, isn't right. there? There's a difference. And so women need to know that about men, and men need to know that about women. And for the men out there, sex starts in the kitchen. How mm -hmm. sweet are you to me in the kitchen? <laughs> that makes my body more ready for you. Because that will make sure things start cooking. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Men are like a microwave, women are like an oven. It just takes a little bit longer. There you go. Oh, there you so go. We're going to stick you know, with the kitchen appliance. And it's just important to me. I'm a frying pan. <laughs> Drop it like it's hot. Oh, All right, no, <laughs> You know, so the point you talk about the emotional connection and thing, when it comes to uh, affairs, affairs can be very telling. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what determines whether that couple will make it and stay together is if somebody has made an emotional connection or there was a man who just said, look, I just had sex with this person mm -hmm. or a woman for that matter. Yeah. But if, if it's the emotional connection with somebody else, that can be a little bit more difficult. Definitely. Um, one of the myths that I want to debunk is that happy relationships still have affairs. There's a myth that if your relationship is unhappy, that you could perhaps have an affair because of the unhappiness of the relationship. But 50% of men that are in affairs report that their relationship is satisfying and happy. That's why they don't leave. So you know? it's not necessarily a matter of whether or not people are happy or not. Often it's the safeguards that a couple has created in their relationship that keep outside sources of threat 
away, especially mm -hmm. in times that are difficult. So a lot of times when emotional connection happens, it happens at work or yeah. you know, with somebody that they weren't really expecting to have a connection with, but as they grow closer, they start having feelings of attraction, and when those feelings of attraction start happening, people start to act on them. And because they act on them, it results oftentimes in an affair when they didn't have any intention of getting into well, that's an affair interesting, in the first place. Because oftentimes if they go out mm -hmm. hunting and seeking, it's just a mm -hmm. natural progression of a relationship. Right. right. Unfortunately, well, there's just not enough safeguards set up with the couple to make sure that they're protecting their relationship from outside sources of threat. Mm. And one thing you and I were talking about in the green room before is how if somebody represses their needs or their wants or they're not even honest with themselves mm -hmm. about what they are, they can set themselves up for being vulnerable yeah. to a relationship. Because you can share that with other people. How many of us, you, you, there are things that you can tell your girlfriends that you won't tell your husband or vice versa, right? Mm -hmm. And so you got to have that girls club, boys club, or a stranger, or because the nail lady and the hair lady know everything. <laughs> And you haven't shared any of that with your spouse. All right, we're going to take a break. But today on Facebook, what is the most complicated relationship you've ever had and why? Is it husband and wife? Is it a mother, daughter, father, son, or maybe brother, sister? Log on. Let us know what you think. We'll share some of your comments later in the show. So what do you think the most complicated uh, relationship combination is? If you need a little love advice or have some relationship questions for our panel, give us a call now at 713-284-1055. 713-284-1055. And we'll try to answer your questions next.